is another action-packed edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on this Wednesday evening. It's going to be a busy night across well, many states, but specifically in eastern Ohio and western PA, we're expecting some gusty storms to roll through overnight. We already have had some storms, of course, today, and we told you about this last evening that uh, the instability in the lower levels of the atmosphere would be very much lacking today, but upstairs plenty of instability and plenty of wind shear, and that's a good recipe for some hail. And uh, the early afternoon storms today did, in fact, produce some hailstones. Now, our hail algorithm didn't pick up on a whole lot here, but there was quite a bit of ground truth, if you will. Uh, we had hailstones measuring a half an inch to up to three quarters of an inch or so in parts of the area. I just queried a couple of storm reports here in Mahoning County and down towards the Salem area, but we did have some hail across the Route 30 corridor in Columbiana County. We had some hail over in Western PA as well. A lot of this was south of Interstate 80, but uh, pretty sizable hailstones for a time, along with some torrential downpours with those early afternoon thunderstorms. All right, recording this video a little after 7 p.m., all was pretty quiet across our local viewing area. We did have a couple of lightning strikes during the five o'clock hour, uh, especially in our southern areas down towards Route 30 and south. Um, but what's left is nothing more than a couple of garden variety showers. In fact, you might see a rainbow um, just before sunset this evening with some breaks in the clouds and these scattered showers around. Now, uh, as we go through the evening, not much is gonna happen, it looks like. Uh, the best chance for showers looks like it has already passed, at least in terms of the evening hours. And we'll get into a large dry slot for the next several hours. It's going to take until the wee hours of tomorrow morning before things get uh, more active again. And it's already very, very active uh, as of just after 7 o'clock Eastern. Tornado watches extend from the south shore of Lake Michigan all the way down to Texas. We have uh, several tornado warnings ongoing and several of these um, tornado watch boxes are particularly dangerous situation. PDS uh, tornado watches. Uh, this is a this is going to be a very bad night for many many states, especially along the Ohio and Mississippi River valleys. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with these outlooks put out by the Storm Prediction Center, it's not often you see this uh, kind of pink color. A level five out of five risk for severe weather um, for the rest of the night tonight. Uh, our scale goes from basically one to five. And, you know, climatologically speaking across the U.S., we see a couple of these per year. We had one earlier this spring in parts of Mississippi and Alabama. Here's our second of the year. So a place like Memphis and heading up towards Cape Girardeau, Paducah, and as far north maybe as Evansville, Indiana. That's that's kind of the corridor of highest severe weather risks tonight, but a very enhanced risk uh, extends all the way up to Toledo and Lima and heading out towards Fort Wayne. The level four risk gets as far north as Indianapolis. You'll notice the risk categories, of course, get lower as you go into eastern Ohio. I think the Storm Prediction Center is a little too far to the east with, you know, kind of the level one and level two here. That being said, we're still not going to be able to rule out some strong wind gusts later on tonight. But, you know, the modeling is pretty consistent here in that the instability will be tremendously lacking once the remnants of our severe weather push uh, east of I-71, especially east of I-77. There just won't be much instability left to fuel these thunderstorms. They'll have a lot of momentum, a lot of forward momentum. So even though their, their supply of warm, juicy air will, will start to be cut off, they're going to have a lot of forward momentum, and so I, I don't want to discount you know, the possibility that strong winds will carry into eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. It just, to me, uh, it seems like a much lower chance here locally of seeing something significant uh, than now towards Toledo and Lima and Cincinnati and places like that. Uh, future cast rotation tracks here, we're looking for rotating updrafts, and you know they're modeled to hold together for a good chunk of the night into Indiana and western Ohio, but then fall apart as uh, we go into eastern Ohio during the wee hours of Thursday morning. So in our television viewing area, we're, we're, our window here is basically about two to four or five at the latest, but basically two to four, I think, is kind of that window in which you could be woken up by some uh, thunder, certainly. There could be strong winds, uh, even though, again, I think a general weakening trend will be ongoing. A, a pocket or two of, of still some strong winds, perhaps reaching 50 to 60 miles per hour. I can't rule that out. I'm just, you know, I'm not impressed with the tornado chances here locally. I don't think these will be big hail producing storms here locally. It's the wind. Um, and, you know, a 50 to 60 mile per hour wind can still be problematic. Now, as most people get up in the morning and go off to work and school, you know, by sunrise or so, the heavier weather is long gone. Um, you know, I, I think it's roughly 2 to 4, maybe 4.30, um, our window for um, possible strong winds and, and torrential downpours and 
all sorts of thunder and lightning. By 7, 8 o'clock, maybe there's a couple of showers around. That's about it. It's actually going to be a decent day on Thursday. I think the sun's going to try to peek through some high clouds, making for kind of a milky sky. And temperatures are going to get off to a fast start. You know, we're going to rise a few degrees overnight, so we'll be close to 60 or so at daybreak. And I think we'll have no trouble getting into the lower, if not middle 70s, Thursday afternoon, depending on just how much filtered sunshine we do get. Now, here comes a front. Now, this front, this is going to be the triggering mechanism for several chances of rain here locally as we head into uh, Thursday night, into Friday, into parts of the weekend. The flooding, you know, aspect of this, our thinking really hasn't changed much on that. We think this is going to be a more serious situation in many of the same areas that are going to have severe weather tonight. So across the mid-Ohio Valley, the lower Ohio Valley, into the Mississippi Valley. But as, as this front stalls, we can get clipped by a little bit of rain Thursday night, first thing Friday morning, especially south of Interstate 80. If you are north of I-80 and closer to I-90, way up north and closer to Ashtabula County and Crawford County, Pennsylvania, you might not see hardly a drop of rain Thursday night. In early Friday morning, whereas the farther south you are, you have a better chance of seeing some light rain. I don't think it's anything all that heavy during that window. And then we probably get a break again for a lot of the day on Friday. Now, it's probably not going to be as nice of a day on Friday as it will be tomorrow. I don't think we get into the 70s Friday, um, 60 or so, and probably not much in the way of dim sunshine on Friday. And then the front starts wiggling back north, and the weather modeling is pretty consistent on this idea that the front wiggles back far enough to the north that by the end of the day Friday and into Friday night, we have a pretty good chance of rain returning not just to our southern viewing area, but just about our entire viewing area. And then Saturday's forecast kind of tricky. You know, a lot of the weather modeling, you know, kind of washes out the stationary front. We get a bona fide area of low pressure pushing off to the north, and that will help drag in some warm air. We've taken up our temperature expectations for Saturday up into the upper 60s. And if that's the premise, if we're going to get that warm, it'll get kind of muggy sort of, by April standards. Could there be a strong thunderstorm in spots before Saturday is through? I don't want to rule that out. I think it's a low chance, but it's a chance nonetheless. Uh, is Saturday a washout? No, I don't think so. I think the steadiest rain's probably in the morning, and then we wait on the front later in the day for showers to try to reemerge. And in between, there may be you know several hours where it doesn't do a whole lot. But I think it'll rain for a lot of Saturday nights. Some of it could be heavy, and some lingering light rain can linger into the day on Sunday. So, you know, our, our tune hasn't changed much as far as the rainfall expectations, both locally and region-wide. There's probably going to be some double-digit totals between now and early next week across the mid-Mississippi Valley, high risks of flooding all up and down the Ohio River Basin and into the Mississippi Basin as well. Locally, some rivers can certainly run high with an expectation perhaps of three to four inches worth of rain. Again, not all at once, but between now and Sunday evening. I think the wettest periods would be tonight with our thunderstorms rolling through. Uh, late Friday night, Saturday morning, and then Saturday night, first thing Sunday morning. Those are the three periods that I think are going to be the wettest. And certainly three or four inches of rain over you know, four days, five days, that can lead to some, some rises on area rivers and streams. After that, the story will be the chill for early next week. You know, we've taken down our temperature expectations for Sunday. In fact, temperatures might fall Sunday. We could see a snowflake mixed with a raindrop or two by the end of the day on Sunday. And a rain or a snow shower will certainly be a possibility Monday. As the next system pivots through the Great Lakes, there could be some bona fide snow showers in the air um, during the second half of the day on Monday. Could be another afternoon where temperatures fall. That could set the stage for just a downright cold day Tuesday. By the way, that's opening day for the Guardians up in Cleveland. Ugh, grizzly looking forecast that day. Locally, not much better than the mid-30s. Probably some snowflakes around. We could be talking about the wind chill that day. It's early April in eastern Ohio and western PA. Sometimes these things are going to happen. I think temperatures will start to moderate beyond that, but only back to about average. This isn't a warm pattern anytime real soon. All the way through the 11th and 12th, you know, by the standards of the second week of April. This is not very warm stuff. So before you go to bed tonight, make sure your devices are are charged up or charging um, because, you know, with the pr prospect of, of gusty winds overnight, there could be some scattered power outages. Uh, be sure if the weather gets particularly nasty overnight, you have multiple ways of getting warnings. Make sure you're following all of us on social media. Uh, we'll keep you updated there. And Jimmy will have the uh, latest for early morning risers on WFMJ today, tomorrow morning. Starting bright and early at 5 a.m. Thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this two, uh, Wednesday evening. I'll see you back here on Thursday.